Welcome back. Interest rates continue to put stress on a lot of Canadian households. Here's a look at the rate and debt in context by the numbers. First, where we are at 5%, central bank rates are at multi-year highs. More importantly for a lot of borrowers, they're up sharply in a relatively short period of time, from below 2% just a few years ago. A look at the long-term chart of rates in Canada is the story of a long decline over decades, interrupted by brief periods of increases. So maybe it's not surprising that borrowers not only got used to low rates, but the idea that rates will get even lower. As of today, the prime rate at Canada's big five banks is 7.2%. And the lowest posted rate for a five-year mortgage is 5.49% for a fixed loan and 5.9% for variable. Compare that, though, to pre-pandemic rates, and it's easy to see that for many borrowers, interest costs have doubled. For a growing number, that has turned into longer time frames to pay the debt off. CMHC now says the majority of mortgages are for terms above 25 years. RBC says that 43% of its mortgages are longer than 25 years, and of those, 23% are more than 35 years. At TD, the numbers are similar. 48% of its mortgage loans are longer than 25 years, and 23% are for super long terms beyond 35 years. Well, one of the biggest problems for a majority of mortgage holders isn't managing their mortgage today. It's what happens when the mortgage is reset in a couple of years. A large number will do so at significantly higher rates. James Laird is co-founder and co-CEO of RateHub.ca. James, great to see you. Thanks for having me. So I think for a long period of time, people that were struggling to manage these increases felt like they could just hang on a little bit and then this would all be over. And it may just be sinking in that it's not going to be over. And in fact, when they reset their, their mortgages and there's a big swath of them coming in 25, 26, it will be at a significantly higher level. How big a problem do you see that being for a lot of current mortgage holders? Amanda, it's, it's painful. Our, our calculation suggests that as you come up for renewal, and go from kind of old world rates to the current rates, mortgage payments are jumping by around uh, 60 or 70%. Uh, so this is very significant. Now, the one thing that gives me some peace of mind is that all of these borrowers were of course stress tested. The stress test came in uh, seven or eight years ago. So anyone who has a mortgage today was stress tested at about five or five and a quarter percent. So rates have gone above that um, by by a little bit, but they, you know, they weren't underwritten at those record low rates that they got during the pandemic. So what I'm anticipating is a lot of, you know, household uh, pain in the budget, but budgets should not break unless there is a job loss between when they got their mortgage and when it comes up for renewal. I guess that will be the big wild card is do we see some kind of recession brought on by the higher rates that are the very thing people are struggling with that then causes a loss of income because there's job losses? We know that could happen. Uh, if people are worried about that, is there anything you advise they do now with their existing mortgage ahead of that reset that can help them prepare for this? I mean, I don't think there's anything, Amanda, that can prepare for a job loss. I think, uh, I don't know, work hard. And if your employer wants you back in the office, it's probably a good time to get down to the office and make sure that you're in good standing with your employer. Uh, but what I think you can do at the moment is, you know, no matter when your renewal is, whether it's next year or in 2027, you can use a, a mortgage calculator, put in uh, today's rates and see what your mortgage payment is and then design a household budget uh, around today's higher rates. Now, I, I think that people are going to have to make tough choices. You know, some extracurricular eating and drinking and, and, and some fun things that we do might need to be cut out of household budgets. But again, as long as there hasn't been a job loss, I do think that Canadians should be able to make those mortgage payments. You mentioned the stress test, James, and we understand that there's some pressure on regulators to actually relax the current stress test because they, they're at such high levels that people say that's actually not for a foreseeable path. Is that a good idea or did we learn that stress tests are actually necessary and even if they feel really high right now, we could wind up there? I think stress tests, even in today's environment, again, they're very challenging. The stress test is between eight and 9%, depending on your mortgage rate. So very challenging, but still, we don't know for certain that rates are gonna go down from here. They could continue to go up further mm -hmm. uh, if inflation proves to be sticky. So I do think the stress test has, it, has its place. Now, it should be for purchases and refinances only. Uh, a flaw in the stress test 
is when your mortgage comes up to renewal and you're not borrowing any more money, your existing lender does not have to put you through the stress test. Mm -hmm. But if you want to shop around to get a lower rate, that new lender would have to stress test you. Now, I believe they are looking at this. It's you know pretty anti-competitive and, and in my opinion, a flaw in the stress test. But generally speaking, for purchase and refinances, I think, I think the stress test should stay even at these elevated rates. James, so good to have you for this. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, Amanda. James Laird is co-founder and co-CEO of RateHub.ca. Canada's small businesses report high levels of stress as well, with debt and higher rates near at the top of their list of concerns or at it. No relief is headed their way on wages or fuel costs. Simon Godreau is vice president of research and chief economist at CFIB. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So I want to start with a characterization of how concerned small businesses are about the debt that they're carrying and their cash flow to service it. Because uh, if I, I think if you looked at this without knowing, you might say, well, that's a country in recession. Uh, how bad is this relative to where businesses usually are? Yeah, that's uh, correct. Uh, this analysis that uh, some indicators are showing uh, something like a recession. I'm not saying they are confirming a recession. Of course, only GDP numbers will do that. Uh, but when you look at uh, different indicators from our monthly tracking survey, like uh, uh, confidence in the next three or 12 months, uh, they're uh, around levels we normally see uh, in a recession period. And you also have a level of concern uh, for borrowing costs uh, that is much, much higher than what we see in normal times. Usually you will have, for example, around uh, historically 22% of businesses that will mention borrowing costs as a difficulty. It has gone sharply up up that share in the past few months. It is now at 51% of business owners that uh, are struggling with this. Uh, a shortage of working capital uh, indicator is also showing mm -hmm. that uh, many more businesses are having difficulties on the financing uh, side. And of course, Simon, the, the problem with all of this is that we aren't yet in recession. Things could get worse for businesses if we do see a real slowdown in consumer spending in this country. How, when you look at that data, do, does that lead you to therefore be concerned about how many of them will survive a recession, even a relatively modest one? Absolutely. We have to keep in mind what the context has been for small businesses, what it is still today. Uh, several years of subpar sales accumulating a debt and uh, no relief in sight. Uh, we, we all know uh, that uh, government recently announced a disappointing uh, change in the SEBA program, which was the pandemic uh, relief program, the flag flagship one for businesses. Uh, no ex meaningful extension of the deadline to keep the forgivable portion of the loan in sight. Uh, businesses only have until uh, January 18. So that leaves very little time for businesses to make up the lost ground, uh, go back to normal revenues. Lots of businesses haven't gone back to normal revenues yet are counting perhaps on this season, uh, this holiday season to make up uh, the lost uh, for the lost sales and uh, hopefully start paying back uh, the, the loans that they've incurred during the pandemic. But we are worried at the moment that it might be uh, too little, too late for uh, a lot of small businesses. A lot of them are hanging on by a thread right now. Simon, we've got to leave it there. Great to have you with us for this. Thank you. Simon Godreau is Vice President of Research and Chief Economist at the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. Coming up, more efforts to rein in big tech have us wondering if that is an impossible task. That's still ahead. But first, the founder of crypto exchange FTX is on trial for allegations that Sam Bankman-Fried stole billions from customer deposits to buy real estate, fund personal investments, and make illegal campaign donations. Prosecutors say, don't be distracted by the complex world of cryptocurrencies. This was just plain old fraud. Jury selection got underway this week, but the real question has to be, who will play him in the movie? We're back after this.